Okay, here we are. We're on the Adobe website and we're going to take a look at the DNG or the digital negative format. Now, on my CS4 DVD, just quickly flip into this, if we just scroll down, you will see that I've done a whole load of videos concerning Bridge as well as saving the images from your cameras. They're coming down, converting them to DNG and the benefits of using the DNG file. There's also a PDF file on there sort of outlining the major benefits. Coming back to the website of Adobe, which is www.adobe.com forward slash products forward slash DNG forward slash. Right, here you will find a wealth of information concerning the DNG format. You'll find some of the manufacturers which are now sort of putting in DNG. As a matter of course, you'll also find the camera manufacturers as well as the, the platforms in Photoshop that are using it through to Photoshop Elements and not forgetting Lightroom itself that's also supporting DNG. As I say there's a whole wealth of information on the website so pop along check it out but one of the major things which actually helped to persuade me into going for DNG is the archival competence. In other words that picture you took today will you still be able to open it tomorrow? Well, perhaps not tomorrow, but you know what I mean? Your, your children, will they be able to open it? Or your children's children? Now, there's a thought. So that's the one thing that helped to persuade me. Now, using the standalone program, you can come to the top right-hand corner here, and this is where we can download it. There's a Mac version, and there's the Windows version. So select whichever sort of platform you're using. I'm going to go for the Mac one, and you'll see it's the Adobe DNG Converter 5.5 update. The reason for the update is listed here as well as these new cameras which have just come on the market, the new Nikon, Olympus and Panasonic. Now every time a new camera comes out, the manufacturers change the way that the, the raw file is working. Therefore, Adobe sometimes find it very, very difficult to, uh, to keep up, hence the DNG file. That's also the reason why you go to open that file and it doesn't open in camera raw try converting it to DNG, making sure of course you've come along to this website and you've got the latest version. Right, just scrolling down a bit further you'll find all the information on the file itself. Click on proceed to download and faster than the speed of light there is our download. Right, this is the standalone version. Looks exactly the same be it Windows or the Mac version. You'll notice here I've selected my new images folder and include all the sort of folders within that folder as well, the contents and subfolders. So in other words, if you've got a whole load of images on your computer that you want to convert from the raw, the, the native raw file to the DNG file, you can do the whole lot. You may have to go off and have a cup of coffee, but by the time you come back, they'll be all converted for you. But for this one, we're just going to convert four images in here from this particular. So let's click on select folder. Let's go to my desktop. This is using Finder. If you're using Windows, it will be Windows Explorer. Selecting that folder, clicking OK to that. There are no subfolders, so I'll uncheck the box. Coming down, select the location where you want to save the converted images. You can save it to the same location, or you might want to select a folder. So let's just do that. We're going to come in again, going to click on desktop, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it DNG. Click in Create, click in Select. There it is. There's our new folder. So we're going to take the images from here. We're going to transfer them into this folder, converting them to DNG along the way. Coming down further again. Oh, just to say that uh, if you've already, if you put doing a whole load of them, a batch conversion as such, with subfolders, don't forget to sort of preserve the subfolders. Tick the box there as well. Right, now for the names. My documents, which is what it's calling it there, it's showing us an example and it's a, a number there, two digit number. You can of course change any of these from the drop down menu. You can have it in sort of uh, capital there, you can have it in uppercase throughout, you can have it with the, the month, the date, the year, whichever way around you want. You can just have serial numbers. Let's just go for a lowercase one so it's going to take in the uh, actual names that I've put on them. There's the digits. You can have whatever digits you want. You'll notice the example changing as I scroll down through there so you can see how it's going to look. We'll go for this and we'll call it uh, 01. There it is, dot DNG. But this you can change as well. You can even shout about it and have it in uppercase if you so desire. Preferences. 
what's all this about? Well, let's click on Change Preferences. This is where you'll select the compatibility that for the camera raw that you're now working with. Now, as we've seen from the Adobe website, it covers from CS right the way through Elements. So check out your camera raw. I'll show you this in just a minute. See which one you're working with. And then when you've seen which one you're working with, you can then make any adjustments here. So you might be 4.1. For example, if you're CS2, if you're CS3, CS4, etc, etc. So just check out which version of Camera Raw you are using. The preview. Now you get a preview JPEG. It's buried inside the DNG file, which makes it nice and neat. You have a choice of none, which isn't strictly true because it's not none. It's a very, very small one. Medium size, which is approximately 1024 on the long side. And full size, which guess what? Yeah, it's big coming down you can uh, embed the original raw file in other words what that means is the original raw file for example if these are n sort of uh, Nikon files so what you can do then is you they'll be embedded as well as the DNG so the NEF file will be embedded with the DNG file it does add to the file size of the image so I tend to leave that switched off clicking OK coming down if you did embed that file there, this is the button where you'd use to extract it. Right, the next thing is just clicking convert. It then opens to images remaining for our conversion status. Number one has been done already. You can see it zips through it quite nicely. Going through and that's it. Let's qu click quit even. Right, let's open this one. Let's just change the view to that. There they are. There's the original files. You'll notice XMP files as well. Let's open the DNG. There's the DNG one just showing the thumbnails. Nice and neat. OK, let's click on this. Let's find out what these XMP files are all about. Here we are in Camera Raw. Now, remember when I said that uh, the version of Camera Raw, there it is shown at the top. That's Camera Raw 5.5 with this particular one. So check this out before you set it up in the uh, DNG converter. Right, coming down here, you'll notice the sliders have been changed. I've actually worked on this image. You know, you can make it a bit lighter, but whatever. Once you made any changes, they're recorded on what is called an XMP file. Now, if we just click here for the preferences, let's lift this up. The general settings here, save image settings in sidecar XMP. In other words, the XMP file is sidecard put alongside the original file. The other alternative is the Camera Raw database. In other words, it's squirreled away on your hard drive in some Adobe folder somewhere. This way, this way, thank you. This way, you keep all the information together, which is really handy if you're passing, if you're sort of putting it on external hard drives or backing up your system, whatever else. Let's click OK to that. Let's click Cancel. So there it is. There's your XMP file. The downside is, should you lose one of these, you've lost all the information. Hide it. <laughs> you've lost all the information. The benefit with these is if we just click on this, one of the benefits should I point out, is there's all the sliders, all the adjustments have been made. Now when we make any changes to this image, as soon as we click done, which is just applying it, the XMP file is buried inside the DNG file. So it's one neat little package. Talking about neat little package. Let's t just take a look at this. If we just come back to this view, you'll notice there's the images. There are the sizes. Let's take a look at this one. Let's change the view on this. There are the sizes. You'll notice that the DNG sizes are approximately 1.3. I've noticed anything up to 2 megabytes smaller in size. You've got a card full? Just think how much size you'll be saving by doing that and keeping it in one neat file. So there you are, that's using the, the standalone program from Adobe for actually converting your existing RAW files. Doesn't matter what make or model of the camera you've got is, providing they're RAW files, you could convert them to a DNG file. My name is David, thank you for joining me and until the next time, happy imaging and take care.